Hello everyone and welcome! In today's video I'm going to be explaining intercoolers. Now this particular intercooler is a bar and plate style air-to-air uh, -air intercooler courtesy of Yonaka Motorsports. So I will include a link in the description if you want to check out uh, the actual product. Um, and I'll get more into what that means air-to-air -air and bar and plate design uh, in this video. So first I want to talk about well, what is the purpose of an intercooler. So the purpose of an intercooler is to reduce the intake air uh, charge temperature. So if you're going to have a turbocharged or supercharged engine and you're going to have say 15 psi of boost going into that engine, you would rather have 15 psi of cold air than 15 psi of hot air because that cooler air is going to carry more oxygen and allow you to burn more fuel and thus create more power. And it's also going to be less likely to combust before you'd like it to uh, since the temperature is initially lower. So let's start to talk about kind of what an air-to-air -air intercooler is, uh, what it means that this is a bar and plate style intercooler. So an air-to-air -air intercooler means that you're using uh, your ambient air in order to cool the air of the intake uh, charge. So what we've got going on here is here's our engine, here's our turbocharger, it could be a supercharger also, uh, and here's our intercooler and this is our system setup. So we've got our cool air coming into the intake uh, of the turbocharger. Now, as air compresses, as you squeeze that air down, it heats it up. You're also going to have a little bit of heat from the uh, exhaust side of the turbocharger heating that inlet air. So once the air comes past and has been compressed, it's going to be heated up, so you're going to have hot compressed air that you're going to be sending to the engine. So you don't want hot compressed air, so that's where this intercooler comes in. So you have air pass through uh, the front of the intercooler and out the back of the intercooler, and inside you've got your intake charges going from hot, uh, you can see here in red, to cool air. The other type of intercooling system you may find is an air to water intercooling system. Once again it can be done with a turbocharged or a supercharged application. For this I've drawn a turbocharger. So an air, to air, an air to water intercooler is using water to cool the intake air charge. So it works a little bit differently. Um, so same idea where we have the intake uh, of the turbocharger, you compress that air, it heats it up, and then you want to send that air to the engine. So instead of sending it directly to the engine, it first passes through this intercooler. And in this intercooler, you have a channel of water flowing. So at the front of your car, you have this uh, radiator, and this radiator, is, the ambient air is passing through it and heating up, and as it passes through it, you have this pump pumping fluid. So the hot fluid is going to come in on one side, and then as that ambient air cools it, you'll have cool liquid coming out the other side. So that cool liquid will go to a second uh, radiator system, basically, and so you will pass the intake air uh, over top of these uh, cooling fins uh, connected to these, this cooling circuit here, and so that's going to cool down the air that's coming in for the intake charge. So you'll have the hot air compressed coming in, and then you'll have cool compressed air coming out and going to your engine. So this air to water intercooler is going to look a little bit different because basically you're going to have your intake charge going through this side of the intercooler and you're going to have a coolant running through uh, this side of the intercooler. And one of the things that you can do with an air to water intercooler is you could take out this front mounted uh, radiator and instead you could just kind of put an ice chest or reservoir in there and so you could be pumping ice water through the intercooler and that'd be good for applications where you're not running the car very long. For example like a a drag racing or perhaps like a hot lap, a single lap um, task where you're not using the car for very long and you just need to cool it as much as possible. And by doing that, by using a uh, water chest filled with ice and having colder water, then you can actually get the compressed air to be cooler than the outside air temperature. So let's talk about the pros and cons of air to air versus air to water. So an air to air intercooler, typically the system is going to be a uh, lower weight, um, it's less complex, and it's going to be cheaper than in implementing an air-to-water intercooling system. However, on the flip side, air-to-water systems typically can be more effective, um, and they also have a decreased pressure loss since the intake is actually much closer to the engine, and you're not running it through this uh, complex route of through the intake, down through the front of the car, um, and then back all the way to the engine. You can kind of place the intake much closer to the engine and have a shorter distance um, so that your pressure loss through the system is less. So I also mentioned that this is a bar and plate style intercooler and so basically that just has to do with the construction here. So it has these plates 
um, stacked on top of each other, and that's just how it's constructed uh, versus a tube and fin. So looking internally, um, the air flowing in through this direction, it's going to kind of look like this for a bar and plate, where you have these different sections where the intake charge can pass through, versus these extruded tubes, uh, which a tube and fin style intercooler would use for the intake charge to go through. So here's just a quick look uh, inside of the bar and plate style intercooler, and this is what the intake charge would be passing through. So now the pros and cons of bar and plate versus a tube and fin style. Um, typically the bar and plate is going to have, uh, it's going to be a stronger intercooler, can handle a little bit more abuse, um, higher uh, pressure boost levels, um, and it also is typically going to have greater cooling. That said, the tube and fin, um, it's typically going to weigh less, it's typically going to cost uh, quite a bit less due to the manufacturing process, and it's going to have less of a pressure drop. Now that less of a pressure drop means you're going to have more air to flow to, for example, if you have a radiator behind it, uh, you're going to have more air flowing to that. But note, it's not going to have the cooling uh, that a bar and plate might have. So finally, I just would want to talk a little bit about the design of intercoolers overall. Um, so one thing to take into consideration is the fin density, um, both passing through uh, the intake charge path and passing through the outside, um, the ambient air path. So the fin density, as you increase that, um, you're going to have more cooling, obviously. But as you have more cooling, you're going to be slowing down the air more and you're going to have a greater pressure drop uh, from one side of the intercooler to the other. So you're not going to have quite as great airflow through it. And also, the pressure from here to here is going to decrease uh, a decent amount. So if you have it really restricted, you may be you may be able to provide high boost levels with your turbocharger, but if it's too restrictive, you won't have that high boost after the intercooler. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Also, another thing to keep in mind, uh, changing the height of the intercooler. This is great because you're going to increase the cooling of it, and typically most of the cooling is done right here. So as the length of this increases, it's not going to be that much more effective because the difference in the temperature between the ambient air and the compressed air isn't that great. So when the temperature difference is small, you're not going to cool it much more versus when the temperature difference is very high, you will cool it a lot more. So having a, a high um, intercooler allows you to maximize that point where the air is very hot and the outside air is very cool and you can clash those two temperatures together and get better overall cooling from the intercooler. That said, you can't just make this really tall intercooler because the size of it is enormous and it's just not going to fit in vehicle applications. Um, and then finally, the thickness of it. So, like I was saying, size can be a problem, so you can make the intercooler thicker, have the air pass through it more, um, and although that allows you to use a smaller size, it's going to decrease your airflow through the intercooler, so you're going to have a greater pressure loss, and you're not going to have quite as great of cooling for your radiator, which typically is going to be behind the intercooler. So thanks for watching. Feel free to check out the links uh, in the video description, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.